Hello and welcome to another ECG in a minute video. I'm going to go through one really important abnormality today. It's going to take me about three or four minutes, not one minute, but uh, it is going to go through Wellen syndrome, type A and type B Wellen syndrome. Now Wellen syndrome is a really important abnormality to detect because it represents critical stenosis of the left anterior descending coronary artery or LAD. So it's really important to spot it. Now, it can be very tricky clinically because these patients can come in absolutely pain-free, looking fine. They've had some chest pain in the pre-hospital environment. If we'd recorded an ECG during that pain, we might well have seen an anterior STEMI. But now they might be completely pain-free because they've re-perfused that LAD. They've got some blood flowing through, it's re-canalized and uh, they've not got the, the chest pain as a result, but we see a really important abnormality. Now, if you see it, do serial ECGs because the patient often evolves to anterior STEMI. Let's take a look at some ECGs. All right, let's have a look at this one first. So let's bring that up nice and big for you so you can see it. Look at V2, V3, and V4, and you can see an obvious abnormality. As we go up into the T wave, it looks okay, but then we get this dip down below the baseline. We've got terminal T wave inversion. The same in V3 where it goes down, terminal T wave inversion, and in V4. And that's a symbol, uh, that's the sign of Wellen syndrome type A. Okay, so we've looked at type A Wellen syndrome. Let's have a look at another ECG, because not all Wellen syndrome is type A. So let's have a look at type B as well. Now this ECG is a bit more complicated than just showing type B Wellen syndrome, but it illustrates the principle. Here we've got deep symmetrical T wave inversion in V1 to V3, and that's symbolic of uh, Wellen syndrome type B, where we've got reperfusion after that critical LAD stenosis is probably occluded for a short while. You can also see some lateral involvement on this ECG. The T waves are really peaked in one and AVL, and you can see the ST segment in V6 looks very suspicious to me. So a bit more complicated than just Wellen syndrome type B on this ECG, but you can see the principle right there. And let's move on to the third ECG, just to hammer home the point about Wellen syndrome here. And this one again is a bit more complicated than just a Wellen syndrome. We saw on the, the first ECG, no ST elevation, but this, these biphasic T waves. Here we've got ST elevation in V2 and in V3. So in fact, this meets the criteria for being called a STEMI. And I would, I would take this patient to the cath lab. Uh, but you have got some terminal T wave inversion. So you see at the end of the T wave in V2 and V3, uh, the T wave is inverted, suggesting that you've got some reperfusion there. And that, therefore, is a Wellens syndrome. Because of the ST elevation, I'd definitely take that patient straight to the cath lab. But uh, that is the phenomenon of Wellens syndrome. I hope that's been useful. It's a quick rundown. It represents LAD stenosis. Remember to do serial ECGs. Remember your patient might look really well, but if they've got good going chest pain and that ECG, you've got to be worried. Do serial ECGs. Involve your cardiologists. Look for an evolving anterior STEMI. Thank you.